In another case, the student newspaper of the University of Virginia, founded and built by Thomas Jefferson, has now advocated removing all references to Thomas Jefferson, who also owned slaves. The editorial on August 11, stating the university must create a physical environment that reflects a commitment to equality and a disavowal of white supremacy. The city of Charlottesville, the home of the University of Virginia, also canceled its annual celebration of Jefferson's birthday, naming it instead Liberation and Freedom Day. And the New York City Council recently removed a statue of Thomas Jefferson. In Madison, Wisconsin, Jefferson Middle School is getting a new name. The committee will choose between dozens of names. One under consideration is Sally Hemings, one of Jefferson's slaves and the mother of some of his children. All of this happens as a Minneapolis school ditches Patrick Henry in its name, and at William Peace University in Raleigh, North Carolina, officials removed the William Peace statue in March. He, too, owned slaves. In New York, they removed the statue of Theodore Roosevelt from outside the Museum of Natural History, which he helped found because of the way that they said he treated indigenous people. In Boston, there are also now calls to rename the famed market building Faneuil Hall. The building served as a meeting place for patriots on the eve of the American Revolution and is named after merchant Peter Faneuil, who gifted it to the city. He, too, owned slaves. But my question is, where does it end? Joining me now is Mark Lamont Hill, author of Seen and Unseen and professor at Temple University. Mark, it's been a long time. Good to see you. Welcome Good to the to program. Welcome friend. to the uh, program. All right, Professor, what am I getting wrong here? Uh, a few things. I, I think, uh, first of all, I think that there is something extraordinary about the people who created this country. It takes an extraordinary will, an extraordinary intellect, uh, an extraordinary passion, extraordinary vision to think that we can create a country uh, found with, of self-governance. I mean, it, it's, it's the American democratic experiment is an extraordinary thing. And if we're going to be honest about history, we can't erase their contributions. It is not necessary to be perfect to be a part of the American project, nor to be a part of American history. We have to tell the whole truth. The problem is statues don't just tell the truth. Statues don't just say these people were here, these people mattered. Statues are signs of veneration. I'll give you another example, Dan. When Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, uh, at, at the time the Supreme Leader of, um, or the leader rather, of, of Iran comes to Columbia University, people said, he should be allowed to speak. Why are we gonna protest that? And, and the argument is, well, yeah, he should be allowed to speak. I think anyone should be allowed to give a speech. But if he were to be giving the commencement ceremony, we'd say, wait a minute, you have a right to speak. That's free speech. But, you, but a commencement ceremony is an honor. It's an honorific. But similarly, we should talk about Washington and Jefferson, but let's not venerate Jefferson. Let's not pretend that Jefferson was just somebody with a minor flaw. Jefferson was racist. Jefferson held onto racist ideologies. Jefferson was a slaveholder. Jefferson was a rapist, fundamentally. Well, and so if... If this is the, who we have on a statue, I'd like to say, hey, wait a minute. We can talk about him and talk about his contributions, but we don't have to be dishonest about what he was. But is it, is it dishonest to say, you know, he wrote the Declaration of Independence, which is you laid out, um, you know, talked about the, the amazing um, contributions that people made in creating a country out of nothing um, and how important Thomas Jefferson was in that. George Washington obviously was critical uh, in that. I agree with you that I guess I would flip it on you and say I don't think we should ignore those flaws because it's more than a flaw, right? I think it would I think it undermines it understates it to just say oh it's a flaw it's a it's a big deal I, I totally right. agree with you but why not be able to say yes big deal big bad pockmark on that person's history but the accomplishments for this country looking back on the creation of this country so significant that we're still going to be able to say, I want a statue of that man. I want a statue of the first president of the United States. I want a statue of the guy who wrote the Declaration of Independence, et cetera. The problem is we have spent, this isn't happening in a vacuum. We have spent hundreds of years venerating these people, pretending that these people were flawless, telling people that Jefferson, excuse me, that George Washington never told a lie ignoring the fact that Jefferson wasn't just racist, he was a pretty bad military leader. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we could say about these people that we've never done. And statues in this tradition, in this culture, don't, aren't for complicated people. 
statues are for our heroes. Statues don't suggest complication or, or, or moral contradiction. Statues suggest that this person is someone that should be admired. And I'm suggesting that for all of his brilliance, and Jefferson was brilliant, for all of his courage as a leader, and Washington wasn't as brilliant as Jefferson, but certainly a better leader, for all of that, yeah. They had fundamental flaws that shouldn't be celebrated, and I, I, I can't do it. I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you what I'm concerned about. All right, I just finished writing a book about Martin Luther King Jr. I walked away after having written that book with more admiration for the man than I had when I started the book. And yet, yeah. it is possible that in 2027, there are going to be documents from the FBI that are going to be released about Martin Luther King that could be really ugly, right, um, yeah. about him and about his treatment of women. We don't know uh, yet. We shall see. If that's to happen, and it turns out that someone, we don't even have to use it, someone like Martin Luther King did terrible things when it came to women, does that mean that suddenly we should be pulling his name off of streets, et cetera? I don't think so. I, I think so. Uh, you do? You know, the, the test of our consistency is it's easy for me to say, take Jefferson down. But I care about Martin Luther King Jr. in a different way, but I, I'm unwavering on this. Otherwise, I'd be a hypocrite. <laughs> well, the, I, I, yeah, look, I mean, by the way, I appreciate your intellectual honesty uh, because, you know, I try to avoid hypocrisy as well. And there are not many people out there like us who will call it straight like they see them. I'm sorry I interrupted you. Go no, ahead. no, no. But it, it, it's <laughs> I mean, look, no one here is is perfect. And it, uh, th there'd be people who would say, well, if I allow some people would say, well, you know, Martin Luther King womanizing or, or p potentially plagiarizing his uh, his Ph.D. dissertation at Boston, all the things that have been talked about in Michael R. Dyson's biography, your work, Taylor Branch's work, uh, you know, all the books. Uh, there are people who say that's not as bad as owning a slave. And, 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 and yet some would say the treatment of women is worse. Right. It's a, it's a fundamental problem of patriarchy and misogyny in this country. And we can't allow our most venerated black mm -hmm. leader to be let off the hook. I'd say, sure, I'd agree with that mm -hmm. point. If, if, if we have to be consistent. Again, you don't yeah. have to be perfect, but to get a statue, your fundamental, your, your fundamental contribution to the world can't be, can't be wallowing in these types of contradictions. And, and I do think that is a slight distinction between King and Jefferson, although I still say, take King down too. But, and that is that Jefferson is saying all men are created equal while holding slaves. That to me is a fundamental problem and a contradiction. Notes on Virginia is fairly racist as a document. So yeah. I, I can't hold on to it. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.